All right, so for our first lecture, uh, we're going to take a little step back and first talk about the general concept of digital marketing um, as opposed to traditional marketing. Traditional marketing, also known as advertising. Digital marketing, digital advertising. So in the real world, traditionally, what are some forms of marketing that you might know about? Mm. TV, Newspaper. newspaper, billboards, flyers, the newspaper, etc. So all of those are marketing tools, marketing, adver uh, marketing avenues, TV, radio. Uh, what's the official name of the guy on the corner flipping that sign? <laughs> so marketing in the in the real world, advertising. A company is trying to reach an audience. I'm a um, restaurant. I'm a realtor. I'm a construction company. I'm trying to reach an audience. Therefore, I should market because word of mouth is useful, but it only goes so far. If I'm a restaurant on Main Street, am I going to rely on people simply walking in front of my restaurant to find my business? probably not going to be very effective. I'm probably also going to put an ad in the paper or on TV, on the radio, or have the person flipping that sign on the corner. I'm going to do some marketing. Well, digital marketing, digital advertising, then, is Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, etc. Blogs, podcasts, live video, everything digital, everything online. But it's just another side, it's the other side of the coin of marketing. A traditional company nowadays should do both. I have a business on Main Street. I need to advertise on TV, but I should also be advertising and reaching an audience on social media. Maybe I am purely an online business. I sell products only online. So obviously I should be engaged in digital marketing. Although some creative companies that are only online also do some real-world marketing. The point is marketing, advertising. We need to do that. You need to do that in order for your business to succeed. Again, I'm using the keywords of business and product and all of that, but if I'm a nonprofit organization, I need to solicit for donations or volunteers or something. I still need to reach an audience that will donate to me, that will... Um, donate their time, their money, etc. I still need to reach an audience. I still need to market and advertise. So I'm going to use keywords of business and product and that sort of thing, but this applies to anything you're doing online. Maybe I simply have a lot of opinions and I want to write about them online. I want to blog. I want to write about my opinions. I'm not trying to sell anything. I just want to put my opinions out there. Marketing will help me get more people to read my opinions. To check out my website and such. Do you teach a class on blogs? I do actually. Uh, not in the summer, but in the fall, uh, I will be doing a blogging class at some time. Most of this marketing stuff that I mentioned in the class, I teach these. I have about five different classes that relate to each other. So uh, look for my name in the catalog and um, take my classes because there's a lot of classes that relate with each other. How long is the blogging class? Almost all my classes are one month long. Four weeks, one day per week, one month to get the information as soon as possible. So if you... Okay, we have scenario. scenario. Uh, billboard on the 805. You have a business, you put a billboard on the 805, a lot of people drive by it less people actually follow through. I put a billboard, I'm a plumber, I put it on the 805, lots of people will look at it, especially during rush hour. But very few people, comparatively, will call me. I'll put my phone number on it. So we have this jargon, impressions, conversions. Converting meaning they just want to buy your product instead of someone else's? Yes, which I will be explaining. So impressions, conversions, and then we have CTR. So impressions is um, people 
see your billboard. You'll see the billboard. Inversions. People call you. People reach out to you. People think about hiring. They call you, they don't like your prices, they don't, they don't hire you. But simply a conversion there in that case is that they were converted from simply seeing your billboard to actually calling you. That's not really all the way through about buying your, your services. I'll get back to CTR in a moment. Another scenario. Tweet on Twitter. You also have impressions, conversions, and CTR. CTR is click-through rate, which is simply conversions divided by impressions. So let's say on Twitter, 765 people see my tweet. Impressions. They were impressed. They, they saw the tweet. But then I get 25 that actually clicked the tweet. I tweeted a picture. I mentioned my rates. I had a link to, to go to my website to, to call me or something. So they clicked on the tweet. That was a conversion. If we do a little math, calculator here, 25 divided by 765, that is 3.26%. Seven, rounding up percent, a three percent, a three and a half, a three and a quarter percent efficiency, efficacy, success rate. So click through rate, CTR is click through rate. It's obviously not a click through rate on a billboard. It has some other term I'm forgetting at the moment, but it is some measurement of success, three percent success which sounds terrible. I want 100% success. I want 90% success. Good luck. Even the big companies, Coca-Cola, Nike, Under Armour, all of these companies, they are constantly advertising and they are constantly getting thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of impressions. But just because a million people saw that Nike ad does not mean they sold a million shoes. They might have only sold 10,000. And 10,000 divided by a million is, I don't know, 2%, let's say. So even that is a low number. So when you have, you know, single-digit conversion rates, that's not bad. It may not be bad. What if I'm selling a product that is very expensive? 3% <clears throat> efficiency in selling it, I'm still profiting. I'm still in the black. I'm not losing money. So I would love to have 25% efficiency or click-through rate or 50% or 75%, but it's very difficult to achieve, even with big, established, famous companies with a lot of, mar a lot of money in their marketing budget. So don't think about that number really as good or bad. The only bad number here is zero when you're not doing it, when you're not on social media, when you're not marketing and advertising. That's when you get zero. But even a 0.1 percent click-through rate could be a good result if you're selling a product, if you're getting those calls, whatever you're trying to accomplish. There's no bad CTR. The only one is zero. Single digit is very common. Double digit means you're amazing even 11%. Okay, 10% of my impressions have given me a result, 10% sales, 10% calls, etc. Simply the conversion on social media like Twitter is a click or they follow you or some kind of action. It doesn't actually mean a sale. We can get that measurement elsewhere. Problem in traditional market. Difficult to reach the right target audience. That billboard that's on the freeway, 
lots of people will see it. I'm a plumber, lots of people saw my billboard. People don't need a plumber until they need a plumber. So a lot of people will see it, but very few conversions, very few will follow through. I would love to have my billboard appear to, to people that really need a plumber now or soon. We don't have that technology at the moment. The billboard is there on the road. It's there. Now, obviously, in the future, I'm sure we're going to have the technology that as you walk around, billboards will change to advertise what you need. Um, well, we have something like that, don't we? Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Solution. Marketing on social media. You can find your target audience a lot faster, a lot easier. Twitter is a global communications tool. It has over 330 million users, multilingual, multinational. And I have a product that I want to reach a specific audience. I can use Twitter. We're talking about Twitter today. But I can use any of the social networks to try to reach that audience. We can segment our audience. We can really target who is going to follow through, who is going to convert. I'm not just going to throw out a tweet out to the world and hope someone bites. I'm going to target it to the right audience to increase the possibility of having a higher CTR. I'll say create content that reaches an audience. Create content is the generic term. On Twitter, it's going to be a tweet, which may be a picture or a video. On Facebook, it's going to be a long-form post or a link to your, to your uh, catalog. On Instagram, creating content, it's going to be a, a picture with a fun filter and a hashtag. So creating content is just generically to say you're going to use the different networks in the appropriate way to reach the audience. Create content that reaches an audience to help improve the chances of conversions. Improve the chances of conversions by increasing your impressions kind of sounds like circular logic. I want more conversions, so I need more impressions. But I need more impressions first before I get conversions. How do I get impressions first so I don't have any audience? Well, we can break out of that cir uh, circular logic. Um, build more followers. So increase impressions to increase to possibly increase impressions or conversions. Followers. That's the optimal word here. I want to get more followers on Twitter. I want to get more followers on Instagram. I want to get more followers on Facebook. All the networks that you choose to use. And that is, again, the part of easier said than done. We will talk about lots of strategies throughout our various weeks to increase followers on each of the networks. The good news is at least these concepts are rather universal. If you're doing these tactics on Twitter, you can do the same thing with some modification, perhaps, on Facebook. You don't have to learn a brand new thing. You don't have to start from zero when you go from one network to the other. What you've learned on Instagram could be applied to various degrees on YouTube. It's all because it, ultimately it's marketing. So, the, um, the details will do, but the big idea, okay, I need to increase followers. Uh, followers are your target audience, your captive audience. <laughs> uh, 
a company that puts that uh, ad out on the paper would love to be able to market it to the right people. They don't have a lot that they can do. Let's say I, I am a, um, a tax preparer. I can put an ad in the newspaper in the business section and it might reach an audience a little easier than putting it in the sports section. On TV, I'm a realtor. Maybe I should put my commercial on uh, you know, the, the Home and Garden Network on one of those house flipping shows. So I should put my commercial at the right time, at the right channel, at the right day to try to find people on uh, the TV avenue. I can do that and better on social media, on Twitter. I can target it to age, gender, economic, uh, outlook, interests, all of these aspects of demographics to reach the right audience. You know, someone, uh, you know, 18 to 25 might not be interested in my tax preparation business, but then someone, you know, 30 to 65 is interested in my tax preparation business. So I can target my tweet to the right people. I can target my Instagram post to the right people. And this is why digital marketing nowadays uh, is so much of an improvement over traditional marketing. You're kind of doing a scattershot approach somewhat in traditional marketing, and you can do a more fine-tuned approach in digital marketing. Gain followers organically or by uh, paid means. Now I'm not saying buying followers, that's completely illegitimate. What I'm saying here is we can use all of these social networks organically, also known as free or paid means, which is of course money. So we can try to build followers and use these networks for free, and it does work just fine, although it takes longer. It takes more time and effort, more, more usage on a consistent level. Whereas the paid means um, you can reach an audience faster. You pay to find the right audience quicker. You pay to reach the right audience quicker. That's not the same as paying for a thousand followers. That's fake. That doesn't work. That's a waste of money. Paying for your tweet to be visible by the right people, that works. Paying for your pin on Pinterest to be viewed by the right people, that works. We'll cover both aspects of that in the class. If I don't have the budget for it, the free method works as well. It just takes longer. And sometimes people have the, you know, the moral outrage of, I don't want to pay Twitter to find an audience. I don't want to pay Facebook to find an audience. I, I think Facebook's a scam and I've got to pay Facebook. It just reinforces that Facebook's a scam. There is some truth to that, that it feels like, why would I pay these networks? It sounds like some sort of scam. But you have to pay to put that billboard up. They don't put it up for, for free. You have to pay that newspaper space. You have to pay the ad on TV. You hopefully are paying minimum wage to that guy that's flipping that sign around. All of that is not free. Even that flyer, you print a thousand flyers to put on a thousand cars, was that free? You probably had to go to Kinko's or whatever and print out a thousand of those. Maybe you borrowed the company printer, but ultimately someone's paying for that. So every aspect of effective marketing, digital or real, has some paid aspect and it does work. So I would say soon enough you want to lose your moral outrage of paying these networks because it does work. Uh, as I've said, I've worked with companies as well. I, I have several clients at the moment that we do this. We made our website, but that's not enough. They need to be on social media. We use Twitter, we use Facebook, we use Instagram, etc. to find an audience. And it works. It works when we pay, when the client pays, to find more of an audience, and we see the result, they see the result in the cash register to show that when they paid some amount on Twitter, they've made more sales. When they paid some amount on Facebook, they made more, they got more phone calls. So it does work to pay. But we'll talk about the free stuff first and then the paid stuff a little later. Since our first network is going to be Twitter, how many of you currently have a Twitter account set up? 
Okay, uh, about half the class. Good, so what we're going to do is, this is going to segue into our first break. Um, I would like that if you would like to get the full knowledge, you need a Twitter account. We're going to take a break. During the break, if you don't have a Twitter account, you want to create one. You want to go to twitter.com and go through the process of creating an account. I, I don't really have to go through a whole lecture to tell you how to create a Twitter account. Just create the Twitter account, and then we're going to use it after the break. We're going to go until 10... 35. Just, just, like a just, just a moment. We're going to go until 1035, and what we're going to do is after we come back from the break, we're going to use the account. The difference with Twitter is it doesn't matter if you've got a personal or a business. It doesn't differentiate it between the different, like the different networks. So all we have to do is click sign up, and then that'll let us create a real or fake Twitter account. What you can do is create the account and just make it completely fake. I'm John Smith, and I'm going to create an account. That's fine. You'll be able to delete the account if you'd like later on. Uh, but take a moment if you don't have an account to create it. We'll be back at about 10.37-ish, and we'll go on.